Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and today we're going to be talking about the first half of version 1.3, uh, Dan Heng in Bibita Lune's banner, and what I think about them, my banner review, and individually their characters, how well they perform at certain Eidolons. Of course, the first thing to know is the three characters on the list is March 7, Astar, as well as Yukong. Similarly, all three characters are free-to-play characters, so we're not going to even be talking about E0. Instead, we're going to be focusing on the Eidolons and what exactly are like their critical Eidolons. I'm going to talk about all of them as well and why I think they are all fantastic, fantastic units for any free-to-play to pick up because they fulfill so many uh, different roles. Let me just give you a TLDR for those of you who are just interested in the overall, overall like summary. I think it's a very strong banner for people who maybe joined after Zealer's banner. Maybe you didn't pull her, so you don't have a lot of critical damage dealer supports. Maybe you joined like in 1.2, 1.1 and stuff like that. Um, th that's fine. I think it's a pretty good banner. Dan Heng and Babita Lune looks to be a very, very strong DPS as well. You gain quite good supports across the board. Um, and I'll explain about their niches in a little bit. As you can see, I have most characters here. Uh, in fact, all characters I have at least at level 71. So I have plenty of testing, a lot of guide videos on the channel. Uh, so if you're looking for resources and you're a new player, tons of it available. But that's my TLDR banner rating. I think is probably, uh, if you're a new player, probably an 8 out of 10. Very good amounts of supports. All of them do better with higher Eidolons as well. Uh, if you are maybe a long time player and you already have all of them at, at uh, higher Eidolons, in fact, I think it's even more valuable because their E6s, uh, at least for these two, are probably the most critical. Uh, but let's first start off first with uh, Yukong, who is probably the newest out of the three of them that people might not be as familiar with her Eidolons because we probably only have her like once. And other than that, I think she was only on one other banner. I can't remember who was also it. Was it maybe like Zingyuan's banner, if I'm not wrong, or maybe Silver Wolf's banner or Luota's banner? I can't remember exactly. But either way, most of us probably wouldn't have her at high Eidolons. Uh, in my opinion, at E0, she's a bit clunky to play. Uh, because you do need a bit of speed tuning on this character. For those of you who don't know, uh, there's only like two stacks that she has. And if you move like characters that are go uh, relatively quickly, you eat up the stacks very, very fast if they take like additional turn and stuff like that. A bit tricky to play at E0. But once you have her at um, higher uh, Eidolons, she starts to become a breeze to play. And let's just go one by one and I'll talk about the critical ones to have. E1 is okay, like you increase speed of all allies start battle. I don't think it's like a major one. This is probably the one that most people will get if you get one copy of her. I don't think it's fantastic yet. Uh, once you start going on is when you start to see a lot of uh, gains on her. She caps off very, very well at E6 and I'll explain in a little bit. So um, for E2, when the energy is like equal to, uh, basically when you have have, uh, and when your allies gain energy, she also gains energy. Just think of it uh, in any way, like when they cap out, she gets energy. This is nice to have, uh, to give her a bit of energy refund. But as you can see, like E1, E2 is like so-so, not very critical. It still doesn't solve the problem of like speed tuning at that two turn limit. Um, three is also nice, just gives her a bit more basic attack. But the ones that are good are really like capped off at the end. And that's why like if you're going for multiple copies of her, this banner is actually a pretty good thing to stock up on. So when you have Roaring Bowstrings here active, she deals 30% more damage to enemies. This is when it starts getting a little bit more interesting. She starts to become more of like a DPS on field as well. Uh, and of course, her E6 is why she's like so, so good at E6, probably like a sub DPS kind of standard. Because when you use her ultimate ability, even though you have like no stacks of her skill available, once you use the ultimate, she gets a stack and immediately you get like this 30% buff and immediately you can deal uh, dish out damage using the ultimate ability to have this like uh, crit rate crit damage buff on herself dealing a ton of damage to the enemies she really becomes quite useful uh, especially at e6 because you can just time whenever you want the additional charge and once she uses her ultimate the stack is still there so you can time when exactly you want to like give it to your main dps and stuff like that a very very good value especially at e6 if you are playing, uh, because if you're pulling on this banner, most likely you're getting uh, Imbibiter Lune, you can of course put together a planetary rendezvous to get even more imaginary damage buffing on uh, characters. Super strong. And I think she does buff, yeah. She does buff imaginary damage of 12% also. So it's excellent uh, Imbibiter Lune support. And from what I see so far, Imbibiter Lune likely will prioritize energy restoration and crit stats as well as attack. Not so much on speed because he is quite skill point consuming. Uh, but we'll talk about him in a little bit towards the end of the video. So having her on the team probably is pretty good because of her. She doesn't care too much about characters that uh, move slower. In fact, she's quite good at buffing those characters as well. So that's my thoughts on Yukong. Super solid banner, really good character. Um, if you have her at E6, she's a very, very different character at E0. And as you can see here, I do have her built like decently well. She does a lot of damage. I have also another video. If you don't care about playing her together with Imbibiter Lune for some reason, I talk about the differences 
between like how many characters like Asta, like Yu Kong, and for example like Bronya and Ting Yun. Where what exactly like separates them and where she fits in the meta? Uh, especially with more idolons, that video will become much much more relevant and relatable to a lot of people as well. Uh, so that is for Yu Kong first of all. Uh, second, let's talk about Asta, who is a character that a lot of people got for free in the very beginning. But if you maybe have like Bronya or Ting Yun, you probably like casted her aside sadly. Uh, still a very good character. Uh, if you play, for example, character like Kafka or uh, attack scaling and speed uh, carrying characters, Esther is likely going to be quite good. Uh, what she is good for is if you see here, she buffs the uh, team fire damage. Uh, if, for example, you have Himiko or maybe you are looking for Topaz in future, I think this is a character worth building as well because she adds a little bit more fire to the team. Might not be uh, the, the best in slot support to Imbiber um, Lune because she is a bit skill point consuming, but this is like planning for the future. At least you get a cap out. Uh, sadly, I don't have her at E6 here, so I'll be glad to pick up at least one copy of her. Uh, let's talk about her different idolons and what are her uh, key ones to look out for. Um, for one, uh, deals additional damage one more time to render enemy. This is okay. I think it's uh, a little bit damage is nice, especially if it's a different enemy, you have more RNG chance to get an additional stack of your attack buff. Uh, not too bad, I would say, but not anything critical. After using her ultimate, uh, Asta's charging stacks will not be reduced in the next turn. I think this is very, very fantastic. Uh, one of her downsides is lowering the amount of stacks that she has, which means that she keeps needing to use her skill so she can keep the uptime. By having this uh, ability up, you actually it actually blends very nicely with like the speed set that is available, like this four-piece messenger or traversing hacker space set. So you give more speed buff to your entire team. At the same time, also you prevent the stack going down, which means she becomes more skill point neutral. In that sense, she starts to become much more synergetic with skill point hungry characters like Imbibitor Lune. Uh, that is my thought at E2. I think at E2 is a critical point when you can start considering playing her with uh, Imbibitor Lune if you don't have like Bronya, you don't have Ting Yun, you don't have Yu Kong at higher Eidolons as well. Uh, three, I think it's pretty strong, but the one that probably uh, um, actually this is this is actually not bad. Talent and skill is probably the main part of a kit because if you notice uh, towards higher idolons, the ultimate actually doesn't scale very well. I can show you uh, uh, very quickly here. If you can see here, it, it's like plus two every time. But once you go at higher idolons here, as you can see, it's like you need so much of these resources just to go up by one speed. At higher ones, not as important. So I would say that three is actually a lot better than five for this character, a rare character that the earlier idolons is actually more important. Uh, but E4, Aurora Bass in Beauty and Bliss, uh, her uh, energy restoration is increased by 15% when she has more, two or more charging stacks. This is tremendous good value. You increase the uptime on her ultimate, which means it, it, it combos together with E2 as well, because once you have an uptime on her ultimate even more, you use less stacks and it like cycles in because when you have more stacks, you have more energy restoration. So it's a good combo, very nice add to, to double down on your E2, uh, which is also quite critical for this character who is otherwise drinking a lot of skill points. Uh, 3 uh, or E6 Galaxy Dreams in Calm. This is when her charging stacks loss in each turn is reduced by 1. I think this is also a really solid one. In my opinion, her best Eidolon is probably E2. Uh, probably second one will be uh, E6 and tight with E4. Uh, this one is decent because it makes her have even less skill point requirements even when her she didn't use her ultimate ability. So scaling with speed, not that bad even though she doesn't have her ultimate up every turn. Uh, I think this is also pretty good just to keep the attack buff up time as well. This is a character worth considering if you are looking in the future, you're planning to play uh, fire teams, uh, for example, Himiko, maybe you're looking for Topaz and Nambi in future, definitely worth considering. Or DOT teams like Kafka, you can pick up this character. Out of all three of them, I think she has the most lackluster E6 Eidolons, uh, but still, Esta as the most lackluster is pretty impressive uh, for a banner cast already. And uh, out of all three of them, the character that I really like the most really is March 7. Uh, I talk about her in a lot of my videos. I think this is one of the highest uh, difficulty player to really master. She fulfills so many different niches. Your March 7 and my March 7 will likely play completely different styles, uh, especially if we are more advanced uh, teams. We have much more complicated uh, permutations and combinations. You can like slot in your roster wherever you put them. March 7 is a character that is very, very varying uh, depending on the thing. If you are interested in like more March 7 theory, I have a video I've done on the channel already which dives more in depth in that but, but basically March 7 uh, she caps off at E6 and I'll start with the cherry on top first the really or, or the main thing that makes this character so good is her E6 grants uh, healing on top of the shield that is already existing. A lot of you might be thinking like, it's only 4% of uh, the shielding is like, doesn't seem to be much. Why is EOD making such a big fuss about it? This 4% heal is on top of the shield uh, that you put on the on the unit. And what this means is she also becomes not only a shielder, but a healer. At the same time, she's also uh, energy redirect for your characters. 
a lot of people are looking at the new character Lynx as a solid unit because she draws more aggro towards uh, destruction characters that maybe, uh, for example, uh, gives them more energy restoration or preservation characters, giving more them more energy restoration by drawing the aggro to them. So people are thinking of funneling uh, resources to Dunhung Imbibitor Lune in that sense of the energy redirect. But March 7 does exactly the same thing with the energy redirect to your main DPS. But if she has E6, she heals them and redirects the energy because every time you get attacked, you get a bit of energy. That's what makes this one like so incrementally good. And if you have her with speed, you put it on your whole team, you have not only cleanse, you have shielding, you have healing, uh, tons of value at E6. Uh, so if any of you want to pick her up here, I think it's super, super good. Especially by now, we probably have a few copies of her maybe here and there since she is also a free unit. I use her in my main team and I have almost every single character in the game except for Clara uh, and speaks volumes of how good this free play unit is if uh, a, a person who has almost every single character is still using her in my Memory of Chaos 10 teams where I just auto battle everything. Uh, super solid character. But let's talk about the rest of her Eidolons. Memory of you, every time you use her ultimate, you freeze a target, you regenerate 6 energy. This is nice. Um, uh, in reality, I don't think you freeze very often, uh, but it's a good amount of refund, especially since her RNG is like 50% if I'm not wrong. Uh, so, But this is still nice to have a bit of refund on her uptime on her ultimate. Uh, memory of it, entering battle, you grant a shield to the 24% of defense to the lowest HP percentage. If all of them are the same HP, I think it allocates to like the leftmost character as well. I do believe it's also considered a ton, so if that, that unit gets hit, she still counters. Uh, it's pretty good in my opinion. Um, ultimate basic attack, not as significant. I think the shielding and talent is much more beneficial, but more or less even uh, in my opinion, since she does basic attack from time to time to gain uh, skill points for the team. Never forfeit again. The talent counter effect can be triggered one more time in each turn. The damage dealt by counter increases by an amount that is blah blah blah, certain amount. This just makes her skill a little bit better with defense for the second part. The first part is the more important one. It gives her more counter uh, follow-up attacks. Which is nice because you also get a little bit more like damage on the ice weaknesses of enemies. So it's free breaking on the side, free uh, additional follow up. And I think it also regenerates energy for her. Can't exactly remember off the top of my head right now. Uh, but that's the for her Eidolons and the critical ones for this character. Uh, E6 is definitely her best, best uh, by far. If you are looking for Eidolons for this character, this is a very good banner. Pick them up. I think it's a solid cast for the supports. Uh, all these supports can go pretty well. Uh, very, very versatile characters as well. Um, how well do they work with uh, Imbibate Lune? If you are looking at the four of them, I think you will lack a bit of sustain, especially if you don't have her at E6, which means that your choice really to form a team will be to take out either Esther or Yukong. My recommendation is if you don't have her at a very, very high Eidolons, the critical Eidolons as mentioned, you probably will want to go for Esther if you only have these or four characters. Of course, I do think other characters are better. I'll talk about it in my team composition video about uh, Imbibitor Lune, which I'll do after this. I think it's very interesting for you guys to check out if you want to know more options besides the banner four star characters. Overall, pretty solid. But now let's talk about Imbibitor Lune and my thoughts about him. I'm just using uh, the base Dunhung here as a, as a placeholder because this is, of course, as of version 1.2. We don't have leak content on, the, on this channel as well. Uh, what I think, I think Imbibitor Lune looks to be a very strong DPS character. My biggest pain about him is definitely his skill point hungriness, how much he consumes skill points. A character that will uh, really, or people that will really like him is people who maybe miss uh, Zealous Banner. You're looking for a very strong DPS to carry your account. So far, the DPSs that we have in the game, other than let's say you miss like the first patch, the two hyper carries in total. Uh, Blade is nice, but it's a bit more contingent whether you have good amounts of sustain for him. Kafka is also nice, but a bit more AoE damage than single target burst nature. And of course, the other two characters like Silverwolf, Lorta are more supportive rather than offensive uh, DPS nature. In that case, Imbiber to Lune is like the first proxy to the hyper carries that we saw in version 1.0. So tons of value for anyone looking for like a, a character to replace them or add on value to the current roster. Uh, he's also a hitch if you're going to need imaginary weakness breaking in future. I think he's also very, very solid to pick up. Uh, in my opinion, if you don't have Zilla or Jingyuan, probably this character might be closer to a very important pool. Um, but I'll talk about the investment value in another video on the channel. You can check it out. I talk about it in like Imbibitor Lune versus Fushen if you're looking at both of them. I like this character. I think he's, uh, he's going to be really strong. The biggest catch is how do you sustain his skill point efficiency? And then we have to look at the other characters in the game to talk about the resource efficiency, how to actually bypass and mitigate uh, that aspect of his downside. I think it's very easily mitigated, but let's talk about that in another video. 
Uh, I'll link two videos, which I think is going to be super useful. One is talking about skill point characters and also maybe one on best teams for Imbibitor Lune if you're looking to build him out. I have tons of other build guides for these other characters on the channel. So just do a quick search. You can check it out on the channel as well. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.